What's going on everyone? So today's video what I want to do is explain to you the gear that I use along with some of the baits that I use for fish the urban lakes and because I get asked this a lot while I'm out at the lake like why do I have such expensive gear or why do I have swim bait gear for fish that are very rarely ever above five pounds, six pounds, ten pounds? Well there's a reason for that because yes the fish in the urban lakes here for Arizona do get pretty big. I've caught multiple eights and nines and tens on simple stuff out of the lakes. And I'm not even talking like Saguaro Canyon or Roosevelt. I'm talking like Kiwanis and Chaparral and some other lakes that you may or may not have access to. They all have big fish. So anyone can catch them too. Um, I'm a boatless angler. So kind of, I want to talk to the rest of you that are also boatless anglers or you don't have the best gear, you can't afford the best gear, what is something that if you want to spend money on, what's going to be the best baits for you, for your money and for your tackle, for your fishing. And I've got quite a bit here. I've got the rods that I've used, I've got my tackle boxes. So I'm also going to show you what's in my tackle boxes as well. Because you, I've seen the videos, you've all seen the videos what works what works across the country what works here what works there your colors that's a good breakdown from the hundreds of baits that are out there but for those of you that are like i've bought the baits i've listened to the recommendations and i'm still not catching fish or i'm still not getting you know the quality or if you're confused about all this what do i need to break it down even farther to help catch me fish from my lake. So again, I live in Mesa, Arizona, and I don't get a chance a lot because I don't have a boat, and my job works me 40 hours plus a week, so I don't have a chance all the time to go out to Pleasant, or Roosevelt, Bartlett, Canyon, and especially in the winter time, that's when we get really busy. So then my off days are more set to just household chores. I don't get a chance to go out a lot or spend a whole day at Canyon. So again, if you're like me, you don't have the chance to get to a big lake. You can only go to a small pond, maybe a couple times a week for a couple hours. What are baits that are gonna be good for you? Now, of course, there's some baits that I don't have because I haven't had access to. Um, and I'll mention a couple of those, like one off the bat's gonna be the MS Slammer. That is a bait that definitely you do need to get or some equivalent version of a topwater wake bait like that because that absolutely, both the seven inch and the nine inch, if you've got bigger fish, go with a nine inch. If you've got smaller fish or spots in your lake or smallies, um, go with a seven inch because it's just, it's more relevant. Uh, if you've got sunfish in your lake, do like a perch pattern. Do something that's gonna stand out. If you have trout or bass, um, like bass and bluegill colors, a lot of times they're very similar and you could get away with throwing a bluegill to represent a bass or a baby bass to represent a bluegill, vice versa. Or if you have trout, you know, pick up something that has trout. Um, but that's a really good one. Or like I said, any other bait that has a good top water waking action like that, phenomenal one. Like I said, that's one of the ones I don't have. Um, currently, I don't have any depths either, but I don't really think I need to talk about the 250s because everyone's done their two cents on them. So onto the gear, onto the stuff. I'm first going to start off with four if you are on a budget, if you can't afford high-end gear, maybe you want to spend less than 400 for a rod and a reel and maybe a bait or two. Um, I think that's pretty consistent. Spending less than 400 for the whole setup with line and a couple lures, because uh, your reel is going to cost you anything from one to 150 and your rod's going to cost you 100 100 plus and then if you get a handful of baits you're maybe looking at like $300. Um, so the first rod that I have, now again, I have more recently I've been able to upgrade my tackle. So this is the Dobbins 765 crankbait rod. Now the reason that I've done the 765 for uh, stuff like this instead of a 764 is I'm targeting a little bit different class of fish. I go to the Colorado River a lot, so I'm also targeting stripers. And along with that, I want a rod that's got good backbone, 
but this is also still the crankbait rod. So for your treble hook baits, this is really good for even deep cranking. Uh, I would throw like a 10XD or an 8XD, but like um, the 6XDs and the 5XDs work really good on this rod. Um, the other day I was even throwing a popper, a little Rico on this, and I was doing just fine with it. But 764 or 765 with either the Fury or the Champion series is going to be a good rod. And again, if you are a budget angler, the 764 Fury is the one you're going to go with. Because for crankbaits, jerk baits, glide baits, anything with treble hooks on them, it's going to give you enough parabolic bend where you're not going to blow fish, but it also gives them still a really nice action. So, you know, a lot of anglers say, think of the 168S waiver as a modified jerk bait where, you know, you still get the side to side and you can jerk it and make it do some crazy things. But again, you are looking at a little bit larger profile, treble hooks, 764 or 765. Like I said, in my case, I'm targeting both large mouth, small mouth, and stripers. So I want a little bit more backbone to this. Um, and I feel this, the 7.6, having that extra six inches or three inches to the rod is really good. Um, okay, personally for me, I'm not a braid to leader guy. Um, this just happens to be an old reel that I have um, that was on my 734, which I'll talk about that one in a moment too. Um, this is the old Alexa 100. They don't make this anymore. So an appropriate reel that I would consider for this, that's gonna give you a little bit on the higher end, because if you're gonna go anywhere, go higher end on the reel. Because you can get away with the 734 or the 764 for about a hundred bucks, maybe 110. Um, but the Tatula 200, that would be my go-to reel. You're looking at 170 for the reel. Like I said, for the rod and the reel, you're looking at about 270, 280, Pick yourself up a couple of these, and of course you can use your crankbaits and jerkbaits already, so you're right about $320, and you've got a good setup here. Um, so that's the rod, the reel. Like I said, I would prefer something else. Um, what I will be getting on this is a Trax 200 in the future. Just everywhere is out right now from them. Swim baits that I use, as you can see, I've got the Rainbow Trout 168 on here. And surprisingly enough, I actually prefer the Rainbow Trout to some of the other colors that are out there. Um, I've also got the Albino Shiner. Albi I think it's Albino Shiner. Um, funny story with this one, I actually catch more catfish with this than I do largemouth. So go figure. One reason I like the Rainbow Trout is you can see that it's got a really nice kind of shine to it, like a metallic look to it. I think that's critical, especially like for my lakes. I do have clear lakes, but I've also got some very stained and muddy lakes or dirty lakes or dark water. Um, and many of the urban lakes, um, Kiwanis, Desert Breeze, Chaparral, just to name a couple of them, are dyed with a blue dye to help keep the weed growth down. That blue dye really does not transmit light very well. So something with shine to it is really well. I've actually smacked them pretty good on the rainbow trout in spring, summer, and fall on the 168 with the rainbow trout pattern. And it just gets massacred. Throw it out there along the rocks or even out in open water. Um, reel it back in, do a little twitch twitch here and there, reel, 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 twitch, twitch. Um, with this one, just like the 200, I still use it as a search bait. I'm going to pretty much do a straight retrieve in. If I see a follower, that's when I make it look like a jerk bait. That's when I really work it. If I'm not getting anything, uh, no followers, I'm not seeing fish on, you know, rock piles or territorial, just cast and wine cover water, see if you can find fish, and then just keep moving. So either the 734, 764, or the 765 with the Fury Series or the Champion, those are gonna be my go-tos. Now, the 734 is a rod that I used to have before this. 
that is a little bit more of an everything kind of rod. So if you are going to be throwing jigs with it as well, maybe your frog, Texas, your small swim baits, um, five and six inch storm paddle tails, that rod is a little bit more catered to everything. It does have a fast tip. I wouldn't really call it a moderate action, maybe a medium moderate, because it does have a good bend to it, but I don't like it for crankbaits and jerkbaits. I feel like it still is a little too stiff and I end up throwing more fish with that rod because it, it's not for me. I like to horse fish in a little bit and if that rod has some play, whereas I'm horsing them in, if that rod can bend just a little bit, I don't throw as many fish. Um, for the baits that I'm going to throw for this, uh, of course, you can do top waters and whatnot. Um, the 765 can go up to one ounce, so you can throw you a little bit larger top waters. Um, I've got a couple Whopper 130s in here, so yeah, not a swim bait per se, but still, this is a good bait. Um, stripers love it, largemouth love it. The 130 is going to give you a little bit larger class fish, so if you are looking for that little bit larger fish in your lake, um, more consistently to get like a two pound and heavier. Go with the 130. 110 is really good too, but the 130 is going to get you just that little bit extra bite. Um, colors, keep it simple. If you've got a little bit dirtier, muddier water, go with something that's going to have some shine to it. If you've got a little bit clearer water or they're really finicky, go with something that's a little bit more natural and not so obnoxious. So even something like this, this is really obnoxious. If you need a good bite and they're eating, this will give you a good bite. Not a whole lot with the small stuff in terms of like the hard baits. S waivers are good, standard jerk baits and whatnot. Um, light trout is a really good color with the 168. Like I said, the rainbow has a good metallic flash to it. Um, and then your shad patterns work really well. Uh, going up a level, I'm gonna talk about the 200s. So, there's a reason I've got a bunch of 200s, because they work. Got number four here. Number five and number six. So They work. The 200 works. And even in the summertime, I still catch fish on the 200s and the 168s. I catch more summertime fish on glides with the 168 because it's smaller, especially smaller fish will eat that. But the 200s work, guys. They really do work. And to keep it even more simple with colors is, I mean, you can already see that I've got the light trout I've got two light trouts, I've got a rainbow, and to pretty much keep it simple with colors, if you ask any pro, they're going to tell you your bone and your white are good colors. Those are just right off the bat, two really good colors. Again, if you've got a little bit more stained water. Um, the rainbow, the original rainbow trout has a really good flash to it. A really good metallic flash in the water. So, good bait to throw if you've got a little bit more stained water or if they've just stocked. That way it mimics it exactly. But even still, if they've just stocked, I'm going to throw the light trout. Light trout number one is still, I mean, look at the, the hook rash on that. I mean, you can see that this bait has been absolutely destroyed. You've got gashes and paints chipping on it, um, on the top as well. I don't know how well that's visible, but there's teeth marks in here. Not only does the 200 get bit, but the light trout. If you're going to get one color for the 200, get the light trout. If you have an option with the 168, so get a light trout, but a rainbow trout's also a good one. And then other than that, um, bone and powder, so this is your white. Both of these are really good. 
Um, they don't really imitate anything, but the fact that they don't look like anything makes them stand out. Um, and I've also got the chartreuse dye on the tails. It really works. Honestly, I think the chartreuse on these ones, on the white ones, makes it stand out a little bit more. Again, especially if you're fishing a little bit dirtier water. But your white and your bone, some version of bone. Um, I've also got some, come on. I've also got some Savage Gears, but again, bone. I don't like the Savage Gear as much as I do the S waivers. Main reason is going to be for that. They're not really durable. Because, I mean, that's what it's supposed to look like, right? And that was within 15 minutes of fishing it after I got it. It just completely chipped off. I got a hold of Savage Gear within about a week or so, and they told me to send me send them my name, my address, they'd get a bait out to me. That was April. This is mid-August now. And I've contacted them a couple times in between, haven't received anything from them. So, one, in my case, customer service is not very good. Um, two, the quality of the lures, I, I wouldn't put my money towards it either. If you're gonna get a bait, get an S waiver. They're so much better. But if all you have is this, if that's all that you can get or if that's all you can afford, again, colors that I recommend is gonna be bone. I don't have it because I painted over it. But I mean, if this goes to show you something, this was a rainbow trout color that I spray painted white, so. That should show you something. And this one, it, it's been bit. It's been chewed. So, it works. Uh, I actually have a couple pictures with this one on my Instagram of a, I don't know if the small mouth's in it, but I know the large mouth has this in his face. Um, this is also what the Striper ate too. So, and I'm talking, you know, stripers, large mouth, small mouth, spots. These are baits that I throw for all of them. Not so much spots because I don't have spots, but largies, smallies, and stripers. Bone and white, good colors. As of course, again, light trout. Always pick up a light trout. The rod that I throw for that is beefed up, of course. Um, this is gonna be the Champion XP again in the 806 from Dobbins. Uh, and as you can see, I've actually upgraded the reel too. So again, if you can get away with spending the money, this is a fantastic setup. And for those of you that watched a prior video where I did the um, Tranks 400 review, I had the Dobbins 806 Fury Series. Again, I've picked up the Fury Series because they are good rods. They're inexpensive, so if you have a budget, Anything in the Fury is a really good setup. It's gonna cost about 100 bucks. Um, I think their swim baits are like 130, 120, but they're worth it if you can't pick up the Champion XP or anything more. Um, and again, I've got a, an S waiver tied on here. If you can, if, you're, if you've already set in mind that you're gonna get a Tranks, get the power handle. It's a faster reel, but I really, really like the cranking power for this. Um, out at Havasu over the winter, we were going for stripers and my buddies told me that there's good smallmouth in the lake too. I smashed into an eight pound smallmouth. Not with this setup. It was with my 806 Fury Series and my Tranks 400 with the power handle, but still that power handle, it's absolutely amazing. You can walk the S waivers and glides much easier because it picks up the line quicker and you can really make them glide and glide and glide and walk the dog if you need a little bit quicker walk the dog it's killer for that so if you're gonna pick up one um, the 300 size or 301 I reel left-handed so all my reels are lefties but if you can pick up a Tranks get a power handle you will not regret it and you will replace everything with power handles 
Um, 30 pound test, straight mono is what I've got on here. 806 is perfect. Now, I feel Dobbins likes to overrate some of the rods. This is two to eight ounces is what it's rated for. I don't believe quite so it can go up to eight ounces. I find six ounces is even a little bit tough for this for it to load and cast properly. I don't get the same distance and I feel like I struggle a little bit more with six ounce baits. So um, for perspective, the ABT 9 inch Suicide Glide is a six ounce bait. The bait sanity is like five or five and a half. That would maybe be the most that I would go. Um, but if you're like me and you have mostly S waivers, the 806 and either the Fury or the Champion XP, perfect rod, a Tranks 300. Like I said, I prefer the power handle. You can crank and fish, no problem. Like, honestly guys, when I hit those smallmouth and stripers in Havasu, I was just going along cranking, 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 boom, real set. I never set the hook. I don't set the hook with this because if I'm already using the reel, as soon as that fish loads up, this pulls in something like 36 or 40 inches of line per handle crank. There's no reason to set the hook. The, the reel is all your set. And then the rod's just there to keep to make sure that they don't come off. So definitely, like I said, a Dobbins 806 is a necessity. Either the Fury or the Champion. Stepping up now is going to be another large bait rod. This is what I consider my bigger bait rod. So this is what the um, bait sanity goes on, Debs 250s, um, my ABT, and that is going to be a much more expensive setup. Um, you can get away with the 806. There's no problem with the 806. You can get away with it. But like I said, the 806, in my opinion, of course, argue me all you want. I would love to hear if you've thrown eight ounce baits on an 806 and had no problem. To me, I find it's a little soft. So I have the, this is the G Loomis 966. So this is the IMX Pro 966. With this, I have my original Trinx 400. Again, power handle. Love the power handles. Uh, particularly on here, I have the Bait Sanity. And like I said, I feel that this rod, this rod is rated for three to eight ounces as opposed to two to eight ounces. And four, five, six, seven inch, or seven ounce baits are perfect on this rod. It throws them, it handles nicely. Um, the equivalent for this that I would say is almost like a 908. It's a foot shorter, but it still has that stopping power of an absolute beast rod. I hit a 10 pound striper with this. Um, I was throwing an S waiver and hit a striper on the river with this. With this reel combination and the rod, that fish was at my feet in like five handle cranks. It took all but maybe maybe 10 seconds of fighting i'm not even sure it was that long 10 pound fish 10 pound striper they fight hard and this rod cranked them in no problem the reel that fish didn't even know it was hooked didn't even know he was coming in until he was at my feet then decided to fight me so you want a good setup this is going to be the top of the line so there's not really an equivalent that i have for this at the moment aside from an 806 but the IMX Pro 966 with the Tranks 400, um, you could use this for musky fishing too. The rod and the reel, you could use this for your saltwater fishing because both the rods are heavy enough to land saltwater fish. And the Tranks series is already saltwater ready. So I wouldn't worry at all about taking this into saltwater if you need to. So really great multi-species rod for this. Again, um, bait sanities, 250s, and ABTs. These would be the ones that I would throw with this. Uh, if you guys haven't picked up an ABT, I'd go ahead and do so. Um, for 100 bucks, yeah, they're not as cheap as a Bait Sanity, but they're also not as expensive as a Depths. And in my opinion, this swims a lot better than a Depths. 
and gets cracked a lot more. I've also thrown this thing into bridges, into docks, boats, concrete rocks. And with the fish that I've caught in there, I mean, you don't even see any hook rash. That, that's how amazing this is. Um, this one I actually painted myself as soon as I got it, but durable and they swim. Um, I do recommend putting feathers on them as well. It really does help. So that's pretty much going to be it for like the treble hook baits that I use. Not a lot of variance with that guys. You're going to notice that there's not a lot of variance. It's, I have a set of what uses, of what I use that works and it works phenomenal. Um, another bait that I forgot for you guys. Um, bull shads. So you can throw the bull shad. I prefer the five, six, and seven inch baits for my waters. Again, because I don't always get a chance to fish a big lake. So for little private ponds, HOAs, the community waters that I have access to, um, most shad aren't much bigger than this because they're thread pin, not gizzard. So even this is sometimes a big profile. This is only the five inch model. And even sometimes this is a mouthful for them, but this bait gets wrecked. This unfortunately is just a brand new bait for me. I lost my original one a while ago to the bottom of the lake, but bullshad works guys. Bullshad absolutely works. So two baits for your little rod is gonna be a 168 in either a five or a six inch bullshad. That's another reason why I have the 765 as I throw a um, little bit heavier baits with it. But absolutely kills. Um, On to the large soft plastics. This one is as simple as it goes. Huddlestons. You're going to get a soft plastic go with a Huddleston. Another one that I have I didn't bring out with me is the Little Creeper Trash Fish in the 8 inch. Huds. These are both ROF 12s. I only fish ROF 5 and ROF 12. And for those of you that are still learning this, ROF is rate of fall per 10 seconds. So ROF 5 is a rate of fall 5 feet in 10 seconds. So that bait sinks half a foot per second. Um, both of these are 12s, so it's a little bit more of almost one foot per second. It's a little bit more. It's like 1.2 feet per second that it falls. But if you're fishing deeper or you want to dredge bottom, the 12s are perfect for that. If you are like me at Qantas Lake where it's a max depth of maybe 8 foot, an you know, ROF5 is going to be perfect for you. Um, do keep the jig hook on there because that hook is perfect. This one, unfortunately, is a little bit older. Um, I hit a fish on here and that hook bent out almost instantly. So I whacked it off. I got rid of it and put a stinger harness on there. That works too. Um, I prefer 65 pound braid if you're gonna do that instead of 80, or um, it's my bad, instead of 50. I have 50 on here because that's all I had at the time. 50 works for your smaller fish definitely go with 65 or 80 if you're going to target anything above 10 pounds or stripers because they will just wreck you. Um, but like I said, keep the stock jig hook. That's best. Um, I just happen to have a trailer on here because stripers will sometimes just nick the back of it or if it's a small fish, um, you still get them with that. But soft baits, keep it simple. Um, and if you want to go with a paddle tail, the um, either 6.8 or 7.8 Kitex are going to be perfect as well. The rod that I'm going to throw for all of my bigger soft plastics is um, this one you don't have to go, I didn't, you don't have to go all out with this one. This is the Daiwa swim bait rod. This is the DX swim bait rod. This particular one is the extra heavy, so this is 3 to 10 ounces. I have that coupled with a Cardiff 401. Again, I'm left-handed retrieve, so I like the left hands. 30-pound um, mono is going to be on all of my big rods. 20-pound mono is going to be on my little rods. Um, currently, I have this set up for catfish. Rod works good for catfish too, guys. 
So if you want a good multi-species rig, catfish, carp, stripers, bass, swim baits, chucking out a dead bluegill, live bluegill, because you've got the the uh, runner on here, you've got the bait clicker on here, good for catfish. Nice power handle to this. Well, I I modified this. This is actually my old Lexa 300 handle that I put on here, but it still works. Carter 400 is, I believe that's 130. This rod was 100 bucks, so I spent like 230 for the whole setup. Um, and you can get away with doing this too. Like I said, good catfish rod, good striper rod for your soft baits, good HUD rod, really. It's a really good HUD rod without spending a whole lot of money for that. And then, like I said, the line that I use, um, pretty simple for that is going to be, I don't have it with me, um, 20 pound in your favorite or 30 pound mono in your favorite. That's what I run. Um, so this is happens to be Maxima 20 pound. You can go with Berkeley Big Game. That's actually what's on the reels right now is Berkeley Big Game and 30. Don't be afraid to throw like 30 pound test. The fish are already so focused in on how big or how obnoxious this is that they're not going to see the line in front of it. I've had two pounders, I've had eight pounders, stripers, gin clear water to muck. You can get away with throwing bigger line because they're so focused on this that they're not focusing on the line, even if they do see it. Because this, right, this is like a UFO in the water to them, and your line's like an airplane kind of thing. They're so focused on this, they're not really going to pay attention to the line. So throw 25, throw 30, especially if you've got big fish in your water. That way you can pull them in quick and you don't have to worry about losing them. Hopefully that helped you guys out a little bit. Um, this video is not necessarily for if you're tried and true and you already know what you're doing. I want to help out those that are fishing in urban lakes that don't really know what they're doing per se or are struggling. Now, these are baits that I use in my home waters where my biggest lake is within 15 minutes is going to be like 13 acres. So I don't have huge lakes. They're all man-made ponds. But I still throw giant 9-inch baits. I still throw Huddleston's. Still throwing S-Wavers like... These baits work across the country. Simplify the colors, like I said. Bone, white, and light trout is all you need with the S waivers. Any trout variation for a Huddleston in either the five or the 12 works. And if you do happen to have shad or bluegill in your water, throw a bull shad. It works. I've had a lot of times where I'm on a bluegill bite and I'll throw this out. Not only is that kind of a shaddish profile, but that's also a bluegill-ish profile. It's a bait fish profile and that's why this works. If they're on a shad bite or a bluegill bite, you rip through, th through there quick enough, they're going to go for it. Simple as that. And then again with your like 168s, light trout, rainbow trout and your a bluegill or a bass color or something to match the hatch something with shine i really like that for those so there you go guys that's my tackle that's what i use that's what i bring to the lake with me every time i go fishing um soft baits i mean talk about soft baits it's um kytex i've got some storm 360s in here that's a Storm 360. But I mean, um, what are you? That's a knockoff, but it still is like a Kytec version, Kytec version. Um, what are you? These are the Strike King Rage Swimmers. Other than that, um, Bass Pro Speed Shad. Anything that looks like this in your 3.8, 4.8, 5, 6, 7, simple enough for your soft baits you don't need to go all out um, you can rig these on your spinner baits 
You can put them on chowder baits. They're really good trailers. Like, they work. They work individually. They work on their own jig heads. They work on weedless rigs. They work on chowder baits. So that should be simple enough for you, is Kitex for your soft plastics. Just get the appropriate size that you need. And then, you know, for your hard baits, I'd put the money in the S-Waiver. More durable, good hardware, I don't have to change it out, and it works. Colors, like I said, keep it simple. A bone, a white, light trout, and then get one random color that you want for your lake, whether it's bass or bluegill, something like that. That's what works for me. So if you stayed along this, around this long, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do, do hope that this helps you guys figure out either a bait to use, um, colors and just to help simplify and to show you someone who's not a tournament angler I don't go out and fish all the time everything I'm not sponsored by anyone YouTube doesn't pay me money so this is just my own earnings that I've put into it so again just like any one of you that's just you make a paycheck you want to go fishing if you can't afford the good gear I would say do it if not like a Dobbins Fury is absolutely perfect for that so go in the water guys catch some fish have fun if you catch anything from watching this video hit me up on instagram just send me a dm i'd love to hear your stories guys take it easy tight lines